Hi, welcome back to RPTV Weekly News. I am Kedar, and joining me today are Jabin and Fred. Together, we bring you updates on stories that directly impact Regent Park and its neighboring areas. In this episode, we delve into the latest news from March 1st to March 12th. Stay tuned for the latest updates and insights affecting our community. TCHC, Daniels, and Tridal host community update meeting with Regent Park residents. Regent Park Neighborhood Association calls for action, addressing community concerns, host update meeting. The Center of Learning and Development presents designing for Regent Park and planning for change. Regent Park Community Health Center worker demand fair compensation. Celebrating community at Ramadan Bazaar with Happy Mom, Happy Children. Mayor Olivia Chow launches recruitment and expansion of Toronto Community Crisis Service. Daylight shooting in Regent Park leaves two dead, one injured. Events and jobs in Regent Park community. TCHC Daniels and Tridal hosts community update meeting with Regent Park residents. On February 29th, Regent Park witnessed a vibrant community meeting hosted by Daniels, Tridal and TCHC showcasing the ongoing neighborhood revitalization. Held at the Regent Park Community Center, the event aimed to update residents on phases one to five progress, upcoming projects, job training opportunities, relocation plans, and engagement initiatives. All the angels say The meeting also had live music and food, adding to the vibrancy of the event. The meeting agenda was moderated by Julio Rigoris, TCHC Tenant Engagement System Manager, who also facilitated dialogue between stakeholders and community members. Speakers included Chris Moyes, City Councillor for Ward 13 Toronto Centre, who delivered opening remarks and Fatima Seya from Daniels, Brian Sherwood from Tridal, Peter Clues from Architects Alliance, Peter Zimmerman, Teresa Tudorova, and Esha Youssef from TCHC, who provided insights into the future of Regent Park. In the last segment of the meeting, community members and residents voiced their thoughts, concerns, and aspirations regarding the revitalization process. This interactive session allowed for an open exchange of ideas, enabling residents to express their perspectives, share feedback, and raise any pressing issues they deem necessary for consideration. The Q&A underscored the importance of community involvement and highlighted the collective commitment to ensuring that the revitalization efforts truly reflect the needs and aspirations of all residents. Before diving into the meeting highlights, RPTV interviewed Will Mendes, Toronto Community Housing Director of Program Delivery. Will Mendes emphasized the importance of community gatherings like this one, stressing the significance of the community benefits engagement process. Hi, my name is Will Mendes. I'm the Director of Program Delivery within the Development Division at Toronto Community Housing and today we are uh, very excited to bring together the Regent Park community uh, for a community update meeting on the revitalization uh, including phases one all the way to phases five um, and it's an important day today because it, it allows residents from Regent Park to come together learn more about the revitalization and it's a critical ingredient to um, building out a a unique recipe for uh, a successful and vibrant community. It enables people to understand what's taking place so that way we can further engage them throughout the process to realize a vision uh, of the community. 
uh, today's meeting, we are going to uh, let the Regent Park community know about the next um, building that will be constructed in Phase 4 of Regent Park. And we're very excited to announce the start of that construction, uh, which will bring forward uh, a lot of replacement housing, rent gear to income replacement housing, as well as other types of housing and community spaces to the community. Community update meetings like this are very important to keep people informed as to what's taking place in the revitalization. It's one of the key building blocks to an engaged community, but it doesn't stop here. Uh, we engage uh, residents of Regent Park throughout the year. Uh, we encourage uh, tenants and residents to contact TCHC staff and, and or the developer or go to our websites to find out more information and uh, we are committed to engaging people throughout the process to keep them informed, uh, get their feedback and involve them in decision making so that way uh, the revitalization of Regent Park speaks to the needs of everyone living here. As part of the phases four and five uh, agreement with uh, Tridel as developer, um, TCHC is working with the community to understand the priorities of Regent Park and through a process we've engaged over 1800 residents uh, in the process of understanding what the needs are, uh, what the current needs are, and perhaps what the future needs are of Regent Park. And that process of engagement is very important because we want to ensure we get this right and um, the Regent Park community can look forward to in the, uh, in the upcoming months uh, to be involved in a voting process where they could um, vote on, the, on a community benefits package that meets their needs. Regent Park is a world-renowned revitalization and what makes this such a special place is that the world is actually in Regent Park. It, it is a community of such rich diversity and we wish to celebrate that every step we take uh, to completing this revitalization process. Good evening everyone, my name is Julio Rigores. I am the manager of uh, Tenant Engagement System with Toronto Community Housing. It is a pleasure for me to be back here in Regent Park at the community center, seeing a lot of familiar faces, new faces, and I wanted to welcome all of you guys into today's uh, session. Thanks. Uh, in terms of agenda, so that we have a bit of a sense of what is going to be happening tonight, um, we're going to have uh, some, uh, our dear Councillor Moise is going to give us some opening remarks. We're going to um, get some updates. For the updates, we have Daniel, we have uh, Tridel, and we have TCAC staff that are going to walk us through uh, the update. We're gonna have a session for Q&A towards the end. It is my pleasure to uh, call to the microphone our city councilor, uh, Chris Moyes. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Oh my goodness, what a turnout. Everyone in Regent Park seems to be here this evening. <laughs> um, you know, just thinking in my way here that this revitalization started almost 15 years ago under late uh, Councillor Pam McConnell. Then we have the gap after she passed away. We had uh, Lucy Trossi here, and then Kristen was here for 12 years, and there was a gap. We had Robin Butts and Putts, and now I'm here. So there's been a lot of transition over the last 15 plus years, and I have seen it firsthand. Um, 15 years ago, I actually lived just a block from here, so Regent Park was my stomping ground. I still live in the, in the area, just a little bit north of here now. So, and I know in the beginning there was some um, difficulty. You know, so a lot of people were displaced initially, we know that. It was, there, there were lessons learned. There was a lot of uh, hurt feelings. Um, but over time, we have come together you know, we have talked things through and we've overcome. And I think we're in a very good place today. I think, you know, today really is a time to celebrate all the successes that we've had over this long period of time and still coming together as community. And of course, food is a big part of community. We have a lot of great food here today. And, um, and it's just, it's just really heartwarming, and we have a lot to be thankful for. Say hello, my name is Fatima uh, Saya. I'm um, on the social impact team at the Daniels Corporation. So many of you I know, some of you I don't. Happy to um, make some introductions afterwards when we're 
um, after the meeting. But I wanted to share some updates just from our end and the work that we're doing in Regent. So I'm gonna give a minute, I'll ask you when I need a slide, thank you. So first I wanted to provide some updates on um, active construction projects in the community that Daniels is, is building. And the first is uh, block one, or what we're calling Daniels on Parliament, which you may have seen uh, under construction currently at Gerard and Parliament. It is the last market building in phase three of the revitalization. Um, and we're looking at um, continuing construction this year and having occupancy sometime in 2025. So the next uh, update that I wanted to provide is related to what we call Block 14. Now, um, the Presentation Center, the Regent Park Presentation Center has been a part of the community for now likely about, I think, 15 years almost. Um, so it's something that you've seen for a very long time. Now the reality is it's actually part of Phase 1 of the revitalization and is going to be developed as well as part of our final market building in the community. So this is a um, market building that is a, a partnership building with Toronto Community Housing as well. So we're working really closely with their team on um, designing that. So we're still in design development stages for that building. Um, something I wanted to flag for that as well is that we're actually exploring opportunities to create affordable, um, additional affordable um, housing on that site. Another program I wanted to flag that is ongoing now, um, but will come back next year as well, is called Moving Towards Opportunity, and this is a program specifically for uh, young people, particularly high school students in grades 11 and 12, who are looking for opportunities to really jumpstart their career and get a little bit of job experience. We've been fortunate enough at Trado to have this as one of three revitalizations that we've, we've been able to um, participate in. Um, but we are really excited about coming to this community. And I think what I want to do tonight is talk a little bit about um, what we've learned, to, what we've learned here, um, and what we're doing. Tridel is a, an organization that you may or may not have heard of. We're primarily a condominium builder. Um, we've been building homes for people in different types and phases and shapes for the past 90 years. So um, it's a long legacy. Today, this, this year is our 90th year. Um, so we're really excited about that. We've built in our time over 75, 87,000 homes. We learned the importance of creating additional community space and making sure that there is good access to more community spaces. Central to the project is a library space and a, and a central plaza that's going to be an opportunity for the community to interact and activate and engage in. What we received was um, a, some, an application that went into the city for review and approval, and it was approved by city council uh, in December. So we're now in the throes of looking to implement the plan that was approved. The first stage of implementing this plan is creating new roads. So Sackville already exists as a through street, but we're going to be upgrading the services within it to support the additional, um, the additional homes as well as make it more walkable and accessible for folks. And we're also creating a new street. What we do also have coming up is eventually a new condominium building. We also are, are thinking about creating a place for um, a, a new sales center, an opportunity where we can both engage in educating people on what this community is all about, and also having an opportunity for folks to engage in, in, and interact with us as a community. We've attended over 25 community events and supported them uh, financially. Uh, we've also made, uh, uh, provided for op uh, scholarship opportunities, working with uh, TCHC. Um, we've, also, um, looked, we've also provided direct investments of over $200,000 into communities and these community events. We've created an opportunity to ensure that we are consistently providing employment for residents all throughout the, um, the, engage, the uh, redevelopment process. Um, to date, uh, before starting construction, we've placed 19 folks in, in, in different jobs. We've, we've provided full-time employment, um, summer internships, uh, part-time employment for those who are looking for that. So we've partnered with quite a few um, local entrepreneurs. We have over 25 that we've um, engaged with. Um, we have, we were continuing to look for opportunities to work with folks who want to look to expand their businesses, um, especially those businesses that are supported through the revitalization and through construction and development. My name is uh, <clears throat> Peter Clues. I'm a partner in the firm Architects Alliance in Toronto. 
and uh, one of the architects for the, the first new building in the final two phases. First of all, I just want to say I've been practicing about 40 years, and I've been to many, many public meetings. And I have to say, this is the coolest one. There's live music, food, and your dan and your counselor showing us his dance moves up here. Um, we we uh, this, this is a bit like a return to Regent Park for us. About 18 years ago, we won a limited design competition for the first building in in uh, Regent Park. 250 Sackville, and it's kind of very fitting for us and very uh, nice to be able to come back again and work on the final phase. So having worked on the first phase and now we're working on the final phase, there's a kind of a nice uh, bookend to that. And we're working on this project with another firm, a Copenhagen-based architectural design firm called Coba. And um, <clears throat> we've been working with Coba in Toronto for the past number of years, and we've deliberately invited them on our team because we actually believe that uh, this city and this community actually need many voices in terms of architectural design and so we recently finished a project with them at the south end of canary district where there are three buildings uh, we worked uh, together and separately with them where we did one building and they did two and this one is a completely um, interlaced project between two design offices <clears throat> on the screen is the uh, site plan so this is the first project being uh, proposed for the final two phases and what we're doing is we're following exactly to the letter the rezoning that went through uh, that was just described to you previously <clears throat> so uh, on the left hand side of the image is dreamers way Sh Girard is at the top of the street uh, at the top of the screen rather and then the new so-called street G that is yet to be uh, named on the right-hand side of the image. And <clears throat> so completing the block is a new landscaped new street which will run from Dreamers Way all the way to River Street. So those are really the four principal streets that define the block. <clears throat> the project is going to include about 275 units of which, and this is for TCHC, um, so it's all affordable um, housing, it's not condominium. It's, um, it will be comprised of a mix of units of which 80% will be two bedrooms and larger. So there's a real focus on families for this project. It will also include a 15,000 square foot community space, which is shown here in that kind of ochre color. A 10,000 square foot retail space fronting on to Girard. So the opportunity here is to really reactivate the south side of Girard all the way from Dreamers Way over to River Street. So to put in street-related community uses. We, we are at the, the beginning of the end of a really long process of working with the community and planning and designing. And we're getting now ready to start the real construction work. So you will see next week there will be fencing going up on, on, the, on the parts of Regent Park that we're going to begin demolishing this year. So the first uh, building, the one that Peter was talking about, is actually right, going to be located right here. And, and, and adjacent to that, that's where the first two market buildings with, with, with our partners Tridel are going to be built as well. So you'll see fencing going up. That can, the demolition work is going to be ongoing over the course of the rest of the year. Um, really, really focused on, on three major concerns. Safety, um, efficiency, we want to get it done quickly as possible because it's a pain. Mm -hmm. Demolition, it causes, it causes noise and, and, and problems in the community, so we want to get it done as quickly as possible. And we want to minimize the, the impact on the community. There will be a number that you can call if there's a problem. The counselor's office is really deeply involved in it, and they're they're really they're really concerned about it. So we're going to do this quickly. We're going to do it. We're going to do it efficiently, and we're going to do it safely. The demolition team is here tonight, and they'd be happy to answer any questions if you have. And we have we at, at the end of the meeting. So so uh, so we're really excited about that. So next week, that's all going to begin. Uh, next slide. So the other thing I wanted to update you on is uh, the building that is coming close to completion. It's one 
75 Oak Street. Uh, this is the project that is a directly across Tubman from the Aquatic Center. So you've seen it in construction over the last three years. The building is now all enclosed. They're working on the interiors of the building. We're going to be ready for occupancy uh, in August, September of this year. And, and we have a relocation team here. So if you're, if you're one of the families, one of the households that's waiting to relocate into a new region park housing, please contact them. They're going to be here and they'll be available. And we'll be giving you information about what that process is going to look like. And that building is uh, going to have 213 RGI and affordable rental units. Um, it's going to have lots of great amenity space. It's going to have, we heard from people that they want great community gardens. So there are big community gardens built into the building. Um, and so we're really, really proud of this. This is a building that we're working on with Daniels and it's, it's really, we're really uh, happy about the, the progress we've made on it. We look forward to people moving in this year and having a celebration there. Uh, next slide. So this is back to uh, the plan that, that uh, Brian uh, presented earlier. And I wanted to use this slide to highlight some of the really important work that we're gonna be doing this year with our engagement team. So this year, as we're getting ready to build that first TCHC building, we wanna reach out to the community and talk about all of the space, particularly in this area, at the western end of the phase four and five site. And we want to talk about what's going to be happening in that building. So in that building, we've got 15,000 of the, of the new community space, 15,000 feet of that new community space that we're planning on building. And we're going to be beginning an engagement process where we want to find out what are the priorities in the community for that space. And we're going to culminate it uh, to hold a request for expressions of interest to identify the end users for that space later this year. This has been a commitment that TCHC has made for many years that in phases four and five, there was gonna be a request for expressions of interest for a community use in one of the spaces in Regent Park. And we decided we wanted to get it done as quickly as possible and get that out into the community. So by the end of this year, we're gonna be able to announce this request for expressions of interest. So we're really, really excited about that. We're also gonna be talking about how we animate all of that new open space. What are the programs that are gonna be in there? What, what or other things are really important to residents? And that's gonna be part of a conversation that we're gonna be having over the rest of the course of this year. So my name is Teresa. I'm the Revitalization Engagement Manager with TCH. We're very excited that um, you know we did our um, phases four and five rezoning process that was approved uh, last year. I know a lot of you came to our informations, consultations, co-design workshops, community walks um, over the last few years. And this is now the plan that we have um, and we're presenting in front of you today. We um, also opened uh, one of our last uh, lanes in uh, phase three, which is actually named after a beloved community member. So that was an amazing community celebration. And uh, we're looking forward to also naming more streets as uh, the plan continues. So put your name forward. Um, we support a number of different community events um, and make those as accessible and barrier free uh, as possible for members. So anything from our summer safety jam, which is done in partnership with our community safety unit, the police, youth organizations, Taste of Region Park, Sunday in the Park, all of the park events that we support with Friends of Region Park and the Bake Oven um, and a number of other things that happen in the community throughout the year. Lastly, our community benefits engagement process is um, underway. In 2022, when Tradell came on board as our developer partner for phases four and five, one of their um, most important elements of the proposal was a commitment to $26.8 million of community benefits that will be directly invested into the Region Park community. And so we set out on a new process that we've never done before uh, with support from local community members to identify exactly how that money will be invested in the community. What you'll see coming up this year is we're co-creating three packages that will be presented 
for you to do a final vote and decide exactly how much money will be allocated to each of those priority areas. So please watch out. That's something that's coming up in sort of the spring, summer, more information to come on that as well. We're also very excited to launch um, Regent Park's first scholarship program later this year. So yes, I see a few hands. Pew, louder, louder, go on. <laughs> um, and that's something that I know has been, um, you know, very much advocated for within the community. Uh, TCHC has an established scholarship process that's worked really well in other communities and we're very excited to bring this forward to Regent Park as well. Um, we'll also be supporting the refresh of the social development plan priorities. That's the fund that's been governing the social transformation within Regent Park. So as the community is evolving, there are new things that come up and how we work to address them together is really important as well. And last but not least, we are very excited to welcome back Regent Park residents to 175 Oak Street to really animate that space to make sure that they are feeling welcomed and back into their community as well. Uh, the reason why I've been invited today and I'm very, very uh, appreciative of that is we've been having lots of discussions about how do we ensure that Regent Park tenants know how to access the process in which that they can actually book spaces so that they can actually govern how the amenity spaces um, functions. Uh, we've been working very closely with Councillor Chris Weiser's office as well. They've been hearing from you on the ground about how this amenity spaces could actually galvanize and animate more new ideas so when phases four and five come that there's reference points that they could point towards. So for phases one to three, um, the community spaces um, that you have are listed here. Um, many of these spaces uh, coexist within your buildings. Um, there have been maybe events in the parks that either TCHC staff have actually uh, facilitated or you have perhaps actually booked spaces in there. So we're going to move now into the second component of our session, which is the q &A. I want to express my concerns about the use of market-based definition for affordable housing in phase four and five of Region Park's development. Highlights that under this definition of affordable housing is paid as 80% of the market rent. And particularly why you believe this is not generally affordable. Reference the city prefers by law OPP 588, which define affordable housing based on income no more than 30% of household income. And questions why this standard is not being applied? Oh. Region Park Neighborhood Association calls for action. Addressing community concerns. Post update meeting following the Region Park Community Update Meeting held on February 29, 2024. Wali Kongali, a prominent leader and member of the Region Park Neighborhood Association and the Social Development Plan co-chair, shares insights and calls for action within the community. Reflecting on the recent gathering hosted by TCHC, Daniels and Tridel, Wali Kongali highlights critical concerns stemming from the approval of phases four and five emphasizing the need for balance and affordability within the neighborhood. Regent Park, my name is Walid Kogali Ali, and I'm with your neighborhood association, the RPNA, the Regent Park Neighborhood Association. I'm also one of the resident co-chairs of the Regent Park Social Development Plan, uh, which has four working groups. Uh, if you can remember, it's communications, community building, the safety network, and uh, employment and economic development. And it's because of the involvement of residents like you that we're making a difference in our community. Our community is becoming much more safer. If you've not heard, in 2023, we had zero gun-related deaths in our community. And that's because of interventions made by many residents like yourself. The reason I'm speaking to you today is because we also had a very important community update meeting on the last day of Black History Month, uh, Thursday, February 29th, and we had uh, an amazing meeting where we had uh, live music, food, childcare provided, and a presentation by Daniels uh, Corp, 
uh, with regards to the development of housing in phases one to three. Uh, Tridel uh, also made a presentation with regards to their plans for phases four and five. And also TCHC uh, spoke to uh, their uh, involvement with development across all phases from one to five. What you missed and what is so important for us to collectively reflect on is that the City of Toronto approved a bylaw in December of 2023, so just last year. And the bylaw is 1325-2023. You can Google it. And there are issues with this bylaw. Uh, the good news is uh, there's a commitment to replace the 633 rent geared to income units. Uh, but what is problematic is we don't have a commitment for more RGI units for phases four and five. So we need your help uh, to advocate with us for more social housing in our community because we want to strike a balance of 50% market and 50% TCHC. Right now, we don't have that balance. We have 70% market residents and 30% TCHC. Uh, the other issue is the definition of affordable housing. Uh, this should concern all of us. They're taking a market-based approach instead of following the city's own bylaw, known as bylaw OPA 558. And you can Google that too. And what that bylaw stipulates is that affordability is based on income not based on market. So no more than 30% of household income. So this is very important to all of us. Uh, I do not want any of our neighbors to be displaced in 10 to 15 years. Uh, if we apply a market-based definition, it means uh, a resident or a family will have to earn 90 to $95,000 to afford a one-bedroom uh, housing. Uh, that, that's so out of touch and out of reach for many of us. So it's important that we collectively reach out to the mayor's office, uh, to members of city council, to Councillor Chris Moyes, to ask them to do the right thing. And that is respect the city's bylaw of OPA 558 and ensure that residents of Regent Park in phases four and five actually qualify for affordable housing. The other issue with the application is something I would like to phrase as tenured affordability, meaning affordability for a certain period of time. So the application said that these units will be affordable for 40 years. Uh, 40 years passes so quickly. Um, and I think it's important for us to recognize that social housing should be guaranteed in perpetuity for as long as it's maintained. Uh, so it's critical that we call on our mayor, call on city council to ensure that social housing is not just rent geared to income and based on income, uh, but also kept affordable in perpetuity or as long as possible. So the last thing that I want to remind all of you is I know uh, you've, some of you have come out to our events during Black History Month. Uh, we've had an opportunity to talk about the impact of anti-black racism, white supremacy. We've had uh, an important opportunity to reflect on the contributions of our neighbors and of folks like yourself in our community. And we need to remember our roots. We need to remember where we came from. Regent Park was a 100% social housing community. And it's important for us to try to strike a balance between market and TCHC and Toronto Community Housing tenants because it's important that everyone has an opportunity to thrive and live in our community so that we can avoid displacement and gentrification. So please join us by calling on our municipal government, our mayor, on ensuring that we respect our own bylaw, OPA. The Center of Learning and Development presents
designing for Regent Park and planning for change. An event aimed to engage Regent Park residents and urban enthusiasts in a discussion about community planning and development. The event featured Sarah Abdella, a passionate advocate for social planning and housing, who is currently pursuing her Master's of Science in Planning at the University of Toronto. Born and raised in Regent Park, Sarah's research paper focused on the neighborhood's revitalization and its impacts on residents. Attendees had the opportunity to delve into the evolving landscape of Regent Park and offer valuable insights into its future development. Hi everybody, my name is Sara. I am currently doing my master's in urban planning at University of Toronto and my CIP, which is my current issues paper or my thesis, is on Regent Park and design and how the two intersect with the realization and um, safety. I think my paper is really important, my findings is really important because they affect phases four and five and they would allow for recommendations to be heard from the community in an academic perspective, which I don't think is as common as the rest of the feedback gathered from Regent Park is. So if you want to hear more, um, please let me know and I'm happy to share my findings and get you more involved. Good evening. Um, we have asked series of different topics throughout uh, before COVID. Um, there's a partnership with UFT and to the Center of Learning and Development. Um, this is uh, a piece that, uh, uh, that we'll be doing throughout the year as well, um, coming up in, uh, in April after Ramadan, and we're gonna have it in May as well. So we're gonna have every series different topics um, that related to Region Park, related to current what's happening in the community around us as well, and we will be featuring different speakers um, this is the first one after we pause before COVID as well. Um, so it, this is one way of uh, engaging the community um, and animating the space. Uh, this is our first uh, Ask Professor that we've been doing in, the, in this space as well. Um, so being very kind to let us use their space um, and uh, grateful. Um, and I know a, a part of the center, our mission is doing our capacity buildings, um, awareness and knowledge uh, engagement as well. Region Park Community Health Center workers demand fair compensation. Region Park Community Health Center, RPCHC employees, members of OPSEU slash SEFPO local 5115 are advocating for a 4% wage increase as they negotiate their contracts for years. They fought for equitable compensation, benefits, and safe working conditions, essential for delivering vital services to the community. RPCHC workers are the backbone of health services in Region Park, offering crucial support in response to the opioid crisis, harm reduction, mental health care, and primary health services. Despite their dedication, they face challenges like high turnover rates and stagnant benefits. A petition has been launched urging RPCHC management to address these issues. RPCHC staff emphasize that their request is not just about financial compensation, but also about respect for the vital work that they do. They urge community members to stand in solidarity with them to secure fair treatment and recognition of their contributions. The petition underscores the collective voice of community members advocating for fair treatment and recognition of the essential role played by the RPCHC workers. My name is Kirsty Millward. I'm the local president for UPSU 5115. Um, I'm on the bargaining team from Regent Park and representing the workers from community health services across the downtown east. So many of our workers have been suffering burnout throughout the whole pandemic and with workplace stress. So we're looking to enhance the mental health hazards and reduce um, stress in the workplace for our members. We are also looking at wages that are just not keeping up with the cost of living crisis. We have workers that do not live in the city because they cannot afford to live in the city and we have a benefit package that has not been increased for 30 years and is not keeping up with the cost of private sector uh, fee for service 
providers. So we have a huge issue with recruitment and retention at Regent Park Health Centre. In 2022, we had a 22% turnover of staff and in 2023, a 15% turnover. And this is like unprecedented. This leads to staff and teams that are overworked and understaffed and has a negative impact on their own health as well. In addition, we need fair and competitive wages to recruit staff that have the skills and the knowledge and expertise to be able to provide community services at the centre. From the management, we're asking for respect. We want them to come to the table and give us a fair and respectful deal. From our community members, where we want them to come out on Tuesday to our rally and show their support. We have a digital action they can also participate in as well. We need the community support, we need the public support to behind us so we can get a fair deal for our workers. We have an imminent strike date of March 22nd if we don't get a deal done right now. So it's crucial to get public pressure and public support in our community and also for our community members to know what is going on. This will have a significant impact on them if we have to take strike action and we are fighting for the workers and not only the workers but the future of this health center we have many dedicated staff working here that want to continue to work and provide the services that they need for this community and we need your help and your support to ensure that we can keep the workers working here and be fairly compensated and make sure management knows that. We also need the government to step up because funding in community health sector, in public health sector, has been underfunded for too long and we need everyone to step up and, and appreciate the work that we do. We have been at this health centre for 50 years. We just celebrated our anniversary last year. And these are crucial and life-saving services for our community. And we don't want to interrupt that service. We want to continue that service. But we need the workers to be respected and we need them to be able to have a livable wage in this city. Celebrating community at Ramadan Bazaar with Happy Mom, Happy Children. On March 9th, the spirit of community and celebration was alive at the Ramadan Bazaar, hosted by Happy Mom, Happy Children, located at 180 Sackville Street. The event unfolded from 12 to 5 p.m., offering a joyous atmosphere filled with activities for families to enjoy. Supported by Tridal, Daniels, Humanity, Pathways to Education, YSM, TCHC, Green Thumbs, and more, the Bazaar aimed to bring people together in the spirit of Ramadan. The event included free food and drinks, henna, popcorn, and cotton candy, a vibrant photo shoot captured cherished moments, while face painting added a splash of color to the festivals. The event showcased Regent Park's diverse spirit and celebrated the vibrant Muslim community. It demonstrated unity among residents and supported from local organizations. Hi everyone, my name is Kamara and I'm from H Squared. And my name is Sar and I'm from Healing is One. Ramadan Mubarak! Um, we want to thank you all for coming out to such a beautiful event. We're here on behalf of Happy Mom, Mom Happy, Happy Children. Children. And Rabia was able to put together one of the best Ramadan bazaars. We want to thank Humanity for sponsoring this event. Um, we have some lovely food donated by Humanity. Um, so yeah. There's some lovely things going on. It is located at 180 Sackville in the party room right over here, as you can see. And it is a packed, crowded room. So there's so many things happening like raffles, um, the, ga the games, there's henna, there's face painting. And overall, it's just a day full of fun. So thank you for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. Peace to be upon all of you. Uh, my name is Rabi Al-Sagrai. I am uh, the founder of uh, Happy Mom, Happy Children. It's a grassroots organization. Uh, we are, uh, we support moms, uplift them, empower them to find their path and inspire them as well by sharing stories, the struggles that we face and go through, uh, just to tell them you aren't alone. So today it's our annual, second annual event. It's a Ramadan Bazaar and it's, a, it's a, an announcement that Ramadan is coming. Ramadan will be after two days. This is not only for Muslims. We have many individuals who came out and from all over different backgrounds, they are not Muslim. So today is, is a, something was so special for me, made me really feel special because the message was heard. People came, they enjoyed, they, they enjoyed henna, they enjoyed face painting, they enjoyed the food, 
they enjoyed the speech, which was, was about Ramadan, and it was so surprised, and I was so happy to see people enjoy it, even though they didn't believe in it, but they, they respected us. So this is Regional Park, and I guess this is our community. As we go to other events, people showed up, and they supported us, and this is a crucial. So thank you for coming, for everyone who came, everyone who didn't come. I want to say thank you to Rabia and to all the volunteers who have helped her put together today's Ramadan Bazaar. It is a remarkable occasion for us to come together once again in Regent Park to celebrate the holy month of Ramadan. I want to extend my sincere gratitude to the community for all their wonderful hard work and support over the years. This year, in particular, is a very challenging year. We have the opportunity to come together in Canada, here, in our neighborhood in Regent Park, without the fear of repercussion, without the fear of violence, because we're here. And this particular Ramadan, I know, is very challenging because there are others, in particularly in Gaza, who do not have the opportunities that we do. In other places, they're experiencing war and conflict. And I know that your hearts are unsettled. I know that your hearts are sad, as mine is also sad with you, based on what we are seeing. I know it is a time for reflection and a time for peace and a time for community love and support, but it's so hard when over 30,000 people have been killed, over 70% of them women and children, and over 71,000 injured, and probably many more under the rubble that we cannot see and we cannot count. This year, we're going to hold them in our hearts. We will continue to call for a ceasefire, for the release of all hostages. We will continue to demand that Canada re immediately reinstate the funding to UNRWA. We will continue to demand that Canada does better, and that includes stopping the sale of arms and trade and technology to Israel while there is a pending genocide underway. I want to make sure that we can hold each other because this is such a dark time. And I don't know what the future will hold. None of us do, really. But I do know that we have our voices and we will continue to use them in this community as we ask and demand for peace. And we will never stop until there is peace. And I want to just say to each and every single one of you, my son is here, he's waiting to get his face painted. Um, I am trying to raise my child and my son in a way that he will understand that the world is and should be built up with love. Because all children, all children around the world are our children. All children are our children, and I will never stop seeing it that way. So thank you again, Rabia, thank you to the volunteers. I wish you and your family all the very best for the month ahead. And again, happy Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem, thank you. Mayor Olivia Chow launches recruitment and expansion of Toronto Community Crisis Service on March the 6th. Mayor Olivia Chow, alongside Deputy Mayor Ozma Malik, launched a recruitment campaign for the expansion of the Toronto Community Crisis Service, TCCS, at Metro Hall, Rotunda, 55 John Street. The job fair attended by over 200 job seekers served as the starting point for hiring more than 100 new staff to augment the Toronto Community Crisis Service. This approach to supporting people in crisis sets people on a path to wellness. It gives people hope. It gives them a chance to heal 
And healing can't happen if they're stuck in the criminal justice system because that is not the right kind of support for them. We know that. We know that because we've seen some tragic results. Let me tell you something. My dad has a mental health issues. Now he passed away in the 90s, mid 90s, 94, live a pretty good long age. But when I was growing up, especially when I first got to Canada, I was 13, my dad had mental health breakdowns because being a school superintendent, all of a sudden, middle class, coming to a country, no jobs, no backup. Can't even drive a taxi because you get lost all the time. This is before GPS, and it was hard. I know, it was hard. So he was hearing noises. He was paranoid. He thinks people are drugging him, poisoning him, following him. And here I... Yeah, I was I don't know, I didn't want to call the police, even though there were violence, because he, not to me, but to my mom. I didn't know what to do. No idea. It was a very, very difficult time. Now, for a teenager like me back then, now I can call 211. At the height of a crisis, I could call 211 and help my dad find a place where he could get support, where he could get a chance to heal, where the family could find hope. That was not available back then, and that was a while ago. Because I'm not a teenager anymore, as you can tell. Um, because sending the right people at the right time, at the right place to deliver this groundbreaking service is critically important. Now, today, this is a recruitment and information event. This is our first step. We're pleased that all of you are here because you're going to learn about the skills, the qualifications, the current employment opportunities with the Toronto Community Crisis Services. You will hear from a panel of TCCS, we, we can find mm, Tess, Tessa, yeah, Te uh, crisis, community crisis service, uh, uh, staff who will share more about the career journey and what they've learned along the way. You'll be also having an opportunity to speak to our community partners, and can I see a show of hand of our community partners that are here? Yeah, there are some that are here oh, at the back. Oh. They're at the table behind you. That's why you can't see them. And um, you will have an opportunity to hear about them, about the hiring processes. You know how many people we're hiring? We have 100 TSSA jobs available across the city's community partner agencies with positions for mental health and frontline crisis workers, office staff, and a lot more. 100 jobs. Yeah, with Gershon Center, Canadian Mental Health Association, Taibu, uh, Taibu, 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 yes, Taibu Community Health Center, Two-Spirited People in the First Nation, and of course, have Find 211 Central. So, a hundred jobs for you. Toronto man charged with two counts of first-degree murder in shooting involving family members in Regent Park. A 23-year-old man is facing two counts of first-degree murder in a daylight triple shooting that also injured a third victim, all confirmed to be family members of the suspect in the city's downtown core in Regent Park. The bracing shooting took place in Parliament Street and Donda Street East area of Regent Park at around 1.30 p.m. on Tuesday. One man believed to be the suspect's father was pronounced dead at the scene and police said two other victims, the suspect's brother and his mother, were rushed to a hospital where the brother later died. The mother suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Two police officers were injured during a foot pursuit of the male suspect. One officer sustained an arm injury, and the other suffered serious leg injuries and was admitted to hospital. The suspect has been arrested in the area and has been identified as Benedict Johnson Congolo of Toronto. 
is being charged with two counts of first-degree murder. Congolo made a brief court appearance on Wednesday and will remain in police custody until another hearing scheduled for next week. The shooting comes as the community recently celebrated a milestone, having zero gun-related deaths in 2023. Community leaders say it's the result of a $2.5 million investment through the Regent Park Social Development Plan. However, the co-chair says funding for 2024 is not expected until the end of summer. Events and job opportunities in Regent Park community. SDP called for resident co-chairs for the Employment and Economic Development Group. The deadline is March 15th. The Regent Park Neighborhood Association is looking for two TCAC residents representatives, the leadership team, and three market resident representatives for the leadership team as well. Deadline is March 26, 2024. For more information, go to regentparkcoalition.ca or call 416-625-7712. Ramadan Iftar 2024 at Daniel Spectrum on Wednesdays, March 13th, 20th, 27th, and April 3rd. Free meals from Regent Park Caterers. For more information, contact Soraya at soraya at tccld.org. St. Jamestown Community Corner invites you to Let's Connect, meet and greet for newcomers. On Tuesdays, March 12th and March 19th at 200 Wesley Street East, St. Jamestown Afrocentric Book Club, Saturday, April 6th at 1 p.m. at 200 Wesley Street Community Corner, RSVP at vedward at stjamestown.org. Toronto Community Housing, our spaces, your ideas. Tenants can now book a TCAC common space for community events or programs. Types of bookings, private events, one-time bookings, recurring events. For more information, contact Felicia White at 416-356-7603. Need money for post-secondary school? Apply for the Investing in Our Diversity Scholarship. Eligible applicants can receive up to $4,000 to cover tuition fees and school-related expenses for full-time post-secondary education or training. Deadline to apply March 29, 2024. For more information, visit torontohousing.ca-iiods or call 416 416- 9944291 Dixon Hall and Daniel Spectrum presents the Multilingual Community Resource Hub every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Daniel Spectrum building there will be assistance with resumes and cover letters application assistance oral translations information and referrals for Canadian health care system housing and government aids mental health matters presents Free the Sisterhood Self-Defense. Learn about self-defense, mental health, financial literacy, and sexual education. Starting March 1st, 2024. Every Friday until June 14th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at 259 Jarvis Street. And that was all for today's show. My name is Javen and my co-hosts are Kedar and Fred. We also like to thank our team of researchers that contributed for this week's show and from our studios at Focus Media Arts Center. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please follow our social media platforms. For more information, check out our website. Thank you.